Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Welcome everyone. I'm Jane McCarthy. Scrutiny over Representative Matt Shea is heating up and tonight the Spokane Valley rep responds. Last week the Guardian newspaper reported he has ties with a group that aims to train young men for Christian warfare. Our political reporter Casey Decker joins us in the studio with Shea's response. Casey? Yeah, guys, well, it wasn't much of a response. Shea didn't actually address any of the report directly. He instead chose to thank his supporters for staying by his side. Republican Representative Matt Shea posting on his personal Facebook page on Friday, saying, quote, the outpouring of prayers and support has been overwhelming. He also posted a Bible verse about not worrying about idols. The post comes as many in the Spokane community are calling on Shea to resign. First, the local chapter of the NAACP. I believe that what we're seeing, and I know what we're standing for as the NAACP is that that's enough. We all need to be accountable, and especially those holding positional authority need even more accountability, not less. Then the city council president, and just moments ago, the Spokane Police Guild. For years, Shea has also been the subject of fierce contempt from both sides of the aisle, with Sheriff Ozzy Knezovich being one of his foremost critics. Knezovich has also called for Shea to resign. This latest wave is the result of an investigative report by The Guardian. The British newspaper obtained emails showing Shea supported and worked with a group called Team Rugged. That organization said it wanted to prepare young men for waging domestic warfare on behalf of Christianity. Here is Shea appearing with that organization in a video posted to Twitter by the Washington State Democrats. Tell uh, everybody out there in Patriot Land, what is Team Rugged? What are you guys doing? So Team Rugged is basically a school of learning for young men to uh, give them all the foundational learning and skills that they need to be effective in Christian warfare. Now, Shea has not responded to any actual media questions on this latest report. That Facebook post is the only thing we've heard from him recently. Shea is currently under investigation by the State House in Olympia, who have hired an independent contractor for that investigation. We're also reaching out today to current Spokane and Spokane Valley candidates running for office to hear whether they believe Shea should resign. In the studio, Casey Decker, Credit News. Casey, thank you very much. In other news, vaping could be to blame for nearly 100 severe lung illnesses. So the state CDC is launching an investigation. I would say like my chest felt like it was collapsing and tightening up and I couldn't breathe. That is how one 18 year old describes the feeling when his medical emergency began about three weeks ago. Doctors told him his right lung had a hole in it, causing it to collapse. Surgeons were able to repair the hole. They believe this happened because of severe inflammation in the patient's lung. That inflammation could have come from smoking, whether that be traditional cigarettes or vape pens. The 18 year old says he started using a jewel about a year and a half ago. He believes vaping caused his lung injury. Jewel declined to comment on this case, but company leaders say they are monitoring this and other reports. Well, more measles cases were reported this week. Now the total number of cases for the year is up to 1,200. According to the CDC, this is the worst measles outbreak since 1992. Even with 21 new cases, the CDC says the outbreak is slowing. But with many students heading back to school in the coming weeks, the CDC wants to stress the importance of vaccines. A massive fire burning in Salem, Oregon at a pallet company can be seen from space. The fire was picked up on a NOAA satellite earlier today. Witnesses say they heard several explosions at around 3 a.m. And when they looked outside, they saw massive flames coming from the pallet yard. Workers say there are several fuel containers on site, so that, be, that could be rather the cause of the explosions. Salem fire crews stopped that fire from spreading. They're working to put it out. No concrete numbers yet, but employees estimate damage could be as high as $7 million there. Yes. Well, take a look at that. Nothing but fresh, clean air out there. Spokane's current air quality in the good range, and it has been for a few weeks now. That is notable because, yes, this is quite the change from what we saw last year. Air quality in Spokane tipped into the hazardous range, forcing everyone indoors. A handful of summer events were even canceled because of all the smoke. This day last year, our air quality stood at 307. Mm. 
and today it's at 31. So take a deep breath out there. I like today's version much better. Much right? better, yeah. Well, we have great air quality and the kind of classic summer evening weather in store tonight. Yes, Tom Sherry loves a classic <laughs> summer evening, right, Tom? I do. I live for this this season. I really enjoy eating outside and just, you know, uh, I love warm weather. Uh, and boy, the, by the way, I think we can thank the, that massive rainstorm that moved through just about two weekends ago uh, for really cleaning out our air and uh, dampening down the fires that were burning in the area and also helping to create uh, new ones from from uh, popping up when we had all that thunder and lightning. So again, it was that massive rainstorm. I think that really did the number for us. Uh, temperature wise, look at this almost 90 degrees in Deer Park. It's 83 in the Spokane Valley in Coeur d'Alene, 86 right now in Spirit Lake. High pressure over the Pacific Northwest. The cooler, cloudy air is actually moving up to the north of us. You can see it all moving into the uh, coast of British Columbia. So we'll look for a very warm evening followed by a mild night and a low of 57. It's a hot one tomorrow. I think it's the last blast of summer heat with a daytime high of 92. We won't stay in the 90s though. Just going to get a little taste of it uh, over Tuesday, maybe into Wednesday. 83 on Saturday, sunny and 82. Comfortable weekend weather on the way as well as your seven day forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Tom. Spokane County could soon have more commissioners. Not because they want more commissioners, but because of a new state law. It means they may have to increase the number of commissioners from three to five. But as Krem 2's Amanda Roldy explains tonight, the county is fighting that law in court, calling it unconstitutional. The Washington State Legislature passed a law last year that requires counties with a population of more than 4,000 people to increase the number of elected county commissioners from three to five members. That means Spokane County would need to add two more positions as well as districts. But Commissioner Al French says this state law is unconstitutional, and Spokane voters already rejected this increase in commissioners in 2015. This legislation ignores the will of the voters who in uh, 2015 voted um, uh, by 55 percent that they want to stay with three commissioners. They had the option of going to five, said overwhelmingly, no, we don't want to do that. State Representative Marcus Riccelli sponsored the legislation. He says voters rejected Proposition 1 because of how redistricting would have been handled. It did not have a redistricting commission. Basically said that two county commissioners could draw the lines of the districts of the five, and I think a lot of people had a problem with that. Commissioner French adds it would cost the county money it does not have to create the two additional commissioner seats. Spokane County is continuing to grow. So wouldn't you agree that maybe this is the right step as far as um, adding commissioners in order to address the growing population of Spokane County? Well, if everything is going well with three commissioners, why would you want to change it? Representative Riccelli says it's because Spokane is growing that it's become more necessary to improve representation. You know, we've operated under the same form of government for years and years and years. Um, we're a growing population and this will ensure that citizens get more responsive government that matches our growing population. The Washington State Association of Counties and Spokane County challenged the legislation. Last week, a Superior Court judge ruled against their lawsuit. So Commissioner French says they plan to take their case to state Supreme Court. But currently there's no telling when that ruling will take place. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. Six sites where the U.S. government manufactured or tested some of its nuclear weapons have now been converted into wildlife refuges. The Hanford Nuclear Site is one of those sites. The project is run by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. According to the Associated Press, project leaders say the sites are good places for animals since they're blocked off from the public. But some critics don't believe the sites have been scrubbed well enough. Workers at Hanford are in the process of cleaning up 56 million gallons of radioactive waste. Environmentalists say this could have adverse effects on the salmon, minks and otters who call that site home. Well, part of Grand Teton National Park is closed until further notice because of aggressive bears. Employees say a mama bear and two cubs charged toward visitors last week, and now the Signal Mountain area will be blocked off. If you are visiting Grand Teton National Park or any other parks, rangers want to remind you not to feed the wild animals. It can cause them to become too friendly with people, and if that happens, the animals will have to be euthanized. On top of that, feeding wildlife in a national park is illegal. Interacting with animals could get you a year in jail and a $5,000 fine. Mm. 
Well, the Washington Invasive Species Council is asking people to check trees and swimming pools for invasive insects. August is the peak time of year to look for invasive bugs. We've got a list of unusual sounding things to look out for. They say watch out for citrus longhorn beetles, the emerald ash borer, and the spotted lantern fly. According to experts, the citrus longhorn beetle can feed on and kill a variety of hardwood trees like apple, maple, oak, and willow. Spotted lantern flies have the potential to impact agricultural crops like apples and grapes and hops. While these three insects are not known to be in Washington, they do have the potential to hitchhike on trucks, planes, and passenger vehicles. So be on the lookout. Keep your eyes peeled, huh? Mm -hmm.